everybody. This is episode six of Golf News Arise College Golf Winter Break Series. That's about six more episodes than I thought we were going to have, but I'm excited. It's been fun to talk to so many people, and you can catch all the previous conversations on golfnewsarise.com. A lot of good stuff, lots of great insight, and obviously it's great to catch up with Islanders playing near and far, and that's what we do in this episode as we welcome uh, one of the greatest Columbia women's golfers ever, and she's now taking on the Indiana record books, and that's Alexis Florio. Alexis, thanks so much for taking some time to uh, come on this podcast series. Thank you, Joe. I'm excited to be here. So you're at Indiana right now. You just finished your first first semester as Indiana, at Indiana as a grad student. Uh, what is that like? What is being at a big school like Indiana like? Uh, off, the, off the air, we were just talking about being at the basketball games and how it's much different than being at a Columbia basketball game or anything like that. But what has what just that first semester of that process been like for you? Um, it's been great. I would say one of the main reasons I wanted to go out to Indiana and play for their golf team was to experience like life in the Midwest and mm -hmm. what the culture is like at a Big Ten sports school. Um, and it's been everything I thought it would be so far. Um, the buy-in from the athletics department and the community and the fans has been great. Um, I've enjoyed like going to the the football games, the basketball games, like experiencing that camaraderie um, amongst everybody involved with IU past and present. So um, that's been great. Bloomington's a real college town. So I checked that off of my list of things I wanted to experience compared to um, my undergrad experience right in New York City. So um, and also just the golf team has been awesome. We have two new head coaches or sorry, one head coach who's new and then our assistant coach is new. So um, really trying to rebuild the program and make sure we're a force to be reckoned with in the Big Ten um, come the spring and beyond. So we had some good finishes um, individually and then as a team in the fall. So hopefully we can continue that momentum into the spring. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll get to some of the spring stuff and uh, Indiana stuff as well in, in a minute. But I want to go back to Columbia because you spent, uh, you know, like you said, you graduated from Columbia. Uh, you're, one, you're one of the greatest players in school history, at least by the record books. You're in a second in career low scoring average and clear career low scoring average versus par. Who knew there was such a thing? <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> um, you led the team in scoring average for two or three seasons. Talk about your experience at Columbia. What was it like playing golf there? And and what did you learn from, from there that allowed you now to be successful at Indiana and wherever you go from there? Yeah, um, I would say it was a, overall a great experience, both on and off the golf course. Um, academically, it challenged me a lot. And it just opened my eyes to a different way of learning. Um, even though I, I love golf and competing, I'm also a pretty big nerd academically. So I fit right in there. Um, I studied English literature and I just really found that that was my passion, like reading and writing and things like that. Um, and then athletically, you know, it really shapes you as a person having to figure out um, playing a division one sport in one of the, the biggest city in the world um, with a school that has a lot of academic rigor. So um, you know, I learned really great skills like time management, discipline, all those things that, you know, you have to have if you're going to be a successful student athlete. Um, you know, we would drive like 40 minutes to the golf course or the driving range each day back and forth um, to and from New York to New Jersey. So um, that was something that I will um not not miss going forward that's for sure it's much more convenient now going like three minutes to the golf course from my apartment at IU so um but overall I think it opened my eyes to um to you know a different a whole different experience than what I was used to in Rhode Island um and it gave me like the courage to keep going on this this student athlete college golf experience and try um, things out at Indiana as a grad student and finish my golf career there. So um, overall, very grateful for my time as a Columbia Lion. And it, it must have been kind of cool too. Uh, I don't know if that's the right word, but you were there and then, you know, Allison Pate came along and now she's kind of taking over the reins. 
both of you are kind of from Rhode Island. I think she's technically from Massachusetts, but she went to school in Rhode Island. She won the high school uh, state championship, a uh, girls state championship anyway. And I think she won the the team and team championship with Wheeler. Anyways, but it must have been cool, like a kind of almost like a transition process for you to be there. Then she comes now, she's kind of taking the reins forward. Um talk about her and your relationship with her over that over the years and how kind of and was that did you think of that? Was that kind of neat that hey, I'm I'm here's a Ryan there in Columbia now another one's coming and here we are, you know? It's kind of crazy how Ryan is such a small state, but we're everywhere. Yes. Um, I first remember meeting Allison. It might have been like maybe the 2013 or 2014 Rhode Island Junior Amateur at Metacomet. Um, R.I.P. And that's the first I, yeah, <laughs> that's the first I had heard of her. Um, and she was super quiet back then and shy. But um, since we, our relationship and friendship has grown over the years, um, she's become much more outgoing. And, and I consider her one of my really good friends um to this day so I think having the opportunity to have a teammate who has the same background as I do and you know we really um paved the way for Rhode Island and Massachusetts golf for girls um and that was a large part due to the U.S. Challenge Cup and Dave Adamonis um giving us opportunities to play and really hone our skills as junior golfers to be ready to take that next step um for college golf so um Allison is a diehard Columbia Lion she loves that school um so much and I think that really translates onto the golf course because she gives it her all when she goes out there to compete and she's the type of person where you're like I'm glad she's my teammate because I know she's giving it 100% while she's out there and um I want to give that same effort to to make sure that you know we're all contributing and and really helping the team be successful and and I think we were able to do that my senior year, which was her sophomore year. Um, and I trust that, you know, she's going to keep doing great things for the rest of her time there. She's team captain now. So um, that's been great. And we also had another um, friend of mine from Massachusetts, Ann Walsh, who came mm -hmm. up through Challenge Cup with us. Um, she's there as well. So I think it's important that New England – um, girls golfers have a presence in division one college golf and and to be able to have such a strong unit at Columbia um, definitely helped us finish second in the Ivy League um, last year at the championship and and I think they have a great shot to win it this coming year absolutely well, we're following them closely as well Allison was actually the first one of the first people to ever do an interview with us when I first launched golf news all right but she had just committed to Columbia so whatever, that was mm -hmm. 2020, whatever year that was. And I re just randomly messaged her on Twitter. And I said, would you come on like our pod? We literally had just just started. Like we weren't like, now we're like somewhat big, like, you know, pat myself mm -hmm. on the back. Um, but she was like one of the first people to ever like come on and like do an interview. So, and she was very quiet back then. Um, so I'm sure, I'm sure she's growing up now, which is great. Um, so you're a star at Columbia. Yeah. You, you graduate, you're grad, you graduate there. Um the, I know you talked about why you wanted to go to Indiana, the Midwest, the college town. Uh, what was that process like, though? I mean, obviously, it must have been stressful in some ways. Uh, but what was that process like of from Columbia now to a big time sports school in Indiana? Take us through that kind of that process. And was it always Indiana? Was that always the the choice, or were there other options? Um, I would say when I had entered the transfer portal, I was looking for an experience that I hadn't had before. Um, so for example, I was looking at some other schools in like the New England, like Southeast area along the East coast, but um, our tournament schedule at Columbia was gonna be, you know, similar to those schools. And I wanted to kind of branch out and, and have exposure to different competition, different locations. Um, like different states I hadn't competed in before. So that was a consideration. Um, and everything kind of fell into place with Indiana um, academically, athletically. And I really felt like I had the the tools and resources to see how good I could get um, these remaining two years of eligibility I have to play college golf. So um, that really stood out to me. And from the day I stepped foot on campus in August, um, 
everything kind of fell into place, um, especially athletically, just having a really great championship golf course three minutes down the road from where I'm living um, and our amazing practice facility that's dedicated to just the, the golf teams um, really helped my game take off once I got there in, in combination with um, being coached by our great new head coaches who have SEC um, and ACC experience um, themselves. So I would say just a combination of all those things really made the transition pretty seamless and a little bit easier because it alleviated a lot of um, like time management stress that I had at Columbia just by nature of my environment. So I've just was so excited to get to spend so much time at the golf course every day. Um, and that translated onto the golf course in competition for me as well. So um, I don't take any time I have spending at those facilities for granted. I think, um, you know, if you put in the work, the results will come and, and hopefully that'll hold true going forward the next year and a half. Absolutely. And you're off to obviously an amazing style. You're named to the big 10 watch list in September. And then obviously the big one is you shot a school record 64 at the Evie Odom Invitational. Uh, take me through that. Obviously, I'll never shoot any any number close to that. Um, but you're shooting that kind of number. One, did you know you were nearing a record, a school record? Excuse me. And two, what was what that like going through that? Yes. So I didn't know I was shooting a school record. Um, I knew the golf course was extremely gettable. Um, some of the girls had gone low who I was paired with, um, the previous two days. Cause I, I shot that score in the final round. Um, and I had set some personal goals that I discussed with the coaches at the beginning of the year of the semester, um, such as like having three top 10 finishes, three top 20 finishes. So I really was focused on like beating myself and playing as best as I could. Um, and, you know, once I was kind of in that wheelhouse of top 10, I was like, let me just try to get into the top five and, and keep kind of breaking those barriers for myself. So, um, you know, some, sometimes you just step foot on a course and it really suits your eye and, and you're in the zone and things just fall into place naturally. And, and that was kind of one of those rounds. So I just kind of let it go with the flow. And, and I remember distinctly, my assistant coach Kendall had said to me, or to the whole team in one of our pep talks prior to that round, she said, you have to want to make birdie more than you fear making bogey. So that mantra was kind of in my head the whole round, just kind of pedal to the metal, keep going, keep giving yourself chances to make birdie and they'll eventually drop. So that's- I want to write that one down in my head. Write that one write down, write down, <laughs> down for myself. I'll yeah. I don't you know, think that's what we work for. Yeah. Like not every round is going to be great. And most, most of the times we walk away disappointed because golf is a sport where it's like, oh, I shot 70, but I could have shot 67 easily. Mm -hmm. And we always replay those shots. So oh, yeah. to just have one of those moments where it fell into place was pretty nice and, and makes you just want to go back out there and, and work harder to get, get that again at some point. But golf always keeps you coming back. Like when you're having a bad round, which a bad round for you is a lot different than a bad round for me. You'll make, like, you'll make birdie on the last hole and then I want to keep you playing instead of, you know what I mean? Like you're, it was, there's always something that happens that keeps you coming back from more. Uh, mm -hmm. You're in the end, obviously. What has been, if there's been, what has been the biggest challenge for you, uh, whether it's golf wise or just in general being at Indiana? Is it the courses are harder? Is it the competition? Like what, what has been the challenge for you? Again, if any, I mean, obviously you're a great player, but what has been the challenge for you at Indiana? Um, I think on the athletic side, it's just realizing that if you want to make some noise and have an impact in the Big Ten, you you don't really have a choice but to to be in that like 74 below, like 74 is on the high end. Like it's just the expectation that the competition is getting better and better. And I think that holds true for all of women's college golf at this point. Like everybody's good. So you have to bring your A game every time. Like the mid seventies really isn't gonna, gonna make any noise um, in most tournaments. So you have to get comfortable going low. And, and I think that's something we practice a lot um, on the team with our coaches is, 
is putting ourselves in uncomfortable, challenging situations in practice so that in tournament mode, we're used to it and we we know how to handle adversity or also embrace opportunity when that comes. Um, so that's on the athletic side. And then personally, I'm still navigating my um, career ideas after college golf. So I started off in a master's of public affairs program and I'm gonna be starting a different program this spring, um, uh, which is a master's in sports management and athletic administration. And I think just this time academically starting a graduate program um, helped me realize I do wanna stay in the sports industry and have a career in either the golf industry or college athletics, still trying to to sort that out. But, um, you know, I think if I wanna keep contributing to um, women's sports and and making it a space that's great for all girls and women and, and paving the way, then I have to be a part of that. So um, that's been something um, I had to go through this semester, just figuring out what I don't want to do so that it's leading me to the things I do want to do. So hopefully I'll I'll keep figuring that out. But I'm excited to go back in a few weeks and start a new program and and hopefully learn what really speaks to me. Well, like you said, you're also a nerd, so I'm sure you I'm sure you got it. I'm sure you got it. Yeah. <laughs> um, you talked about women's sports uh, recently over the last few weeks, or I guess it's been. Uh, the NCAA announced that they're expanding the women's NCAA tournament, women's golf NCAA tournament. I think they're adding three teams. I think it's going from 20, 24 to 27, something something along those lines. I think it's something like mm -hmm. that. Um, what hopefully, one, hopefully it impacts you, right? Hopefully Indiana, <laughs> hopefully Indiana gets in. But uh, just what, what do you think that means for the growth of women's golf and just women's sports in general? I think it's it's really huge. Um, I was talking to my coach about this briefly because he had shared that news with me. Um, and, you know, I think the more girls you can have competing for championships, the better. Like, I've never been one to shy away from the competition. And I think whether you win or lose, you're in an environment that is like celebrating excellence and we're all pushing ourselves to be better so the more people that can be in the mix to do that I think the better um so I'm excited to see how that pans out in the spring um I know there might be I think they're trying to sort out like how the regionals work because you know say you get picked for a regional that um five teams get through versus four or three um that could be tricky but I think that's going to depend on like the strength of the field and the rankings and all that nitty gritty stuff that other people take care of. I just show up to, to swing the club. So, but I think it's great overall. Uh, this is the winter break series podcast. It is winter break. Christmas is in a couple of days. Um, how much golf golf wise now, how much work are you doing in the, during this downtime, I guess, during this break, how much, Work are you putting in? Are you going down south? Are you hitting balls? Are you, you know, going to alpine and, and shooting low scores there? How much, how much work, <laughs> is, how much work is going into your golf game during this this winter break? Yeah, so this week actually, I started getting back into my normal routine of, um, you know, workouts, um, putting, hitting balls, full, full regiment again. Um, I just finished my finals last week and I was using our indoor facilities and, and working out and things like that um, on my own. But now that I'm home, we have a short break. It's only like three weeks. We start classes on January 9th. Oh, wow. So I'm not going down south this fall. I mean, sorry, this break. Um, I've done that in previous years, but this year I'm just gonna stay here. Um, I've been using a few different indoor facilities um, I go up and see my coach in Grafton, Mass, um, once a week while I'm home, and we communicate um, through text and video exchange and things like that. So definitely, you know, getting my swing ready to go. And I think this is also a time where you just kind of zone in on the fundamentals and non-negotiables, like your fitness routine. And I like to read um, like personal development development and sports psychology books. So making sure my mind is sharp and ready to go to compete 
And then I also have, have like my little putting mat rolled out and I try to do 30 to 40 minutes of putting a day um, to keep that sharp as well. Cause it's been cold here this week, even though it's been sunny. So the hands get cold if I'm outside, but um, I'd love to go out and walk like nine or 18 holes if, if it gets a little bit warmer soon. It's funny you say that. Uh, I had Andrew O'Leary on the previous episode. He's a senior at Notre Dame. He's got one semester left. And he did the interview from his car. So he had just finished hitting balls at Atlantic driving range. And oh, like, yeah. 30 degrees. I'm like, dude, like, what are you doing? Like, But yeah. that's what he does. He's like, I'm going to go to Pawtucket now and try to walk you know, nine holes there just to keep my game sharp because obviously he's similar situation to you. I think he said he is going down south uh, to play a tournament in Florida in Florida next week. But either way, the point is he was on, he was doing that same grind that he was out in the freezing cold, pounding the mat at Atlanta dry range. So it's funny that you say that. And I think that's fascinating to me too, right? The grind of it, right? You got to love the grind of golf because if you don't love it, then you're just going to be miserable. Um, yeah. S- spring semester coming up. What are you looking forward to the most about the spring semester? Is there a tournament that you have circled? Is there, other than the NCAAs, I mean that's a given. Um, but is there a tournament you have circled? Is there something that you're looking forward to more so than than anything else? Um, yes. So we're going to Arizona to compete in Notre Dame's tournament. It's called the Clover Cup mm-hmm. in March. Um, I've never been to Arizona. Never played desert golf. So I'm excited to go out there and see what that's like. And I'm sure there'll be some good schools there because Notre Dame's in the ACC. So I'm looking forward to that a lot. And we're going down to Naples for a training trip, um, like the third week of January, we're going to play a match against Louisville. So I'm excited to do that. Um, And I think compete in a big 10 championship come April. Um, Those, anytime you, you have a conference championship, it just, means more and that that's when you really see like the team bonding moments all come to fruition and you know everybody's really just proud to be representing their school um which I know we should do every tournament but it's just I don't know something about it it's just a lot more fun than your regular tournament so I'm looking forward to that a lot um and hopefully continuing to make an impact on the team and the program um because we're only going to keep getting better from this point. And I think the more that, that we can make some noise, um, the better. So a couple more, then I'll get you out of here. You can move on with your life. Um, I would be <laughs> remiss if I didn't ask you, and we talked about this off air and, and you laughed and we both laughed about it. But every time I post the article about you results, school record, whatever, we get tons of interaction and tons of reaction from Alpine and Alpine members. So I have to ask you, uh, you're, how much does Alpine mean to you and growing up there and playing there? You know, what is, what do you, what's your time at Alpine meant, meant to you in your career? It's meant a lot to me. Um, my whole family has been members there for years. Um, it's a very close knit community. So, you know, you're saying hi to people constantly, you know, a lot about each other's lives. Um, everybody's been super supportive of me during my golf career because they've seen me go from hitting balls in the range with my mom when I couldn't break a hundred to, you know, playing college golf and um, really accomplishing some big goals that I've had. And I'm always proud to represent them, whether I'm playing in a, in an amateur tournament on my own or competing in the college setting. um, Because it means a lot to, to not forget where you came from and know that it's possible um, with the right resources and the right people supporting you. So um, I always try to make them proud and, and, you know, it was a great course to grow up competing on and and playing on. Um, The greens are are really challenging there. So um, that's where I have a lot of memories, especially summer nights, just going out there by yourself, dropping tons of balls and, and really just grinding and, and I think that's where where I developed like my love for the game, just me in the course and and no stress. So yeah, I'm really grateful that I I have the opportunity to to be a member there and and play that golf course. All right, a couple of quick hitters. Uh, favorite club in the bag? You need a shot, it's a clutch shot to win on a tournament. 
Uh, you can determine the shot if you want. Everyone's been asking me, oh, what kind of shot is it? What's the situation? I'm like, this is way too complicated. Just, your favorite club in the bag, you need, need a clutch shot. What are you pulling? I love to bump and run a pitching wedge. All right, all right. That's a different That's answer. one of my favorite. I've chipped in quite a few times with bump and run pitching wedges, so. Now, when you when you chip, are you chipping? Because I just chip to get the ball on the green, right? Mm. I get the ball close, quote unquote. Are you, mm -hmm. When you chip, you're chipping to make it. Not necessarily all the time, obviously, but generally speaking, you're trying to make it. Yeah, or like that three foot circle around the cup, you know, like guaranteeing a par if you need to get up and down, or like a birdie if you're going for a par five and two, or yeah, two. So. We talked about this a little bit at the beginning, but obviously you're in Indiana. They're known for their basketball. You've been to a couple of games, both men and women. Indiana basketball games are what? How, are they, how cool are they? How cool is the atmosphere? What is it like to be at an Indiana basketball game for someone that's never been there? It's very cool. Um, Assembly Hall is the, the stadium where the games are, and, and it has a very cool um, structure. It's kind of like a big bowl, so like the the seating goes very very high and um yeah the, the courts down below so it's just a very cool atmosphere to be in um our band is great um we have a really good like cheerleading and dance team so it's everybody goes all in um you will see if your fair share of uh candy striped pants the team wears that to warm mm -hmm. up so oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um a lot of crimson and cream in the building for sure all right, your favorite course you've played this fall with Indiana, and then your favorite course you've played overall in your career. If they're the same, then pick a second. This fall, I loved um, University Ridge, which was University of Wisconsin's golf course. That was our first tournament of the fall. Um, a really great, challenging setup. Um, you could see a lot of the natural terrain of Wisconsin, just kind of the plains. Um, so that was cool for me because I've never been to Wisconsin. Um, and my favorite golf course ever. I was thinking about this the other day, actually, because I, I'm quick to say like Torrey Pines are just one of the more famous ones. But I played a course out in uh, Park City, Utah, after I graduated from high school called Promontory, the Promontory Club. And I think that was one of my favorites because just being from Rhode Island and going to Utah where, you know, you have so much, so many mountains um, and the elevation changes, that was really cool. So I would say that one. Interesting. That, interesting. I'm always fascinated with you college kids and the courses that you guys play, because you guys play a lot of obviously nice courses and some famous ones as well. Uh, mm -hmm. For East Lake, for example, the East Lake Cup and, and obviously others, Great Hall. Yeah. Um, so I'm always fascinated and everyone's had pretty much a different answer, which I would expect, obviously, because you all have different schedules. If I had known you 10 years ago, I had said, hey, Alexis, in however many years from now, you're going to be playing golf in the Midwest at Indiana of all places. You would have told me what? <laughs> I would say you're crazy because I wouldn't have understood or even considered that we would have to endure a pandemic for that to be possible. True. So it'd be hard for me to connect the dots. <laughs> as to how I would end up there because I don't have any ties to the Midwest. So valid, valid point, valid point. It's funny. I asked you that because so we cover Will Dixon, obviously he's the, on the mini tours and he went out to Waterloo, Iowa to play in a mm. pro, a pro event in Iowa and he ended up winning it. Um, but anyway, so I texted him. I said, Will, if I had told you when you were at Moses Brown that you're going to be playing professional golf in Iowa, <laughs> what would you have said? <laughs> and yeah. he goes, I would have, I would have, I, there was no way I would have believed you that I was being in Iowa. But it was funny, one of those things is those Midwest states, you just don't really think much of them. Obviously, they're, they're nice places and they, I'm sure they have a lot of cool things, but it's not something that you mm -hmm. really think about, especially when it comes to golf. So I just thought that's why I figured I'd throw that question at you because that's what I told him in a text after he won the tournament and he left. Um, yeah. One, one thing you miss about Columbia. Hmm. I think I miss like the academic environment. Um, maybe one thing specifically is like the libraries. <laughs> like, of course, I just, you're a nerd, of course. I, I should have known. Yeah, like the architecture, the, I don't know, just the space itself was so cool. And 
unique and the, the libraries at Indiana are kind of dark and dingy. I don't know, they're not as inspiring. So <laughs> um, I don't spend a lot of time in those libraries now. Of course, I should have known libraries. <laughs> uh, all right, last question, then we'll get you out of here. We have a lot of kids, uh, girls as well, obviously, uh, either just starting college, they're, they're freshmen in college or going to college next year and presumably playing college golf. Uh, whether it's Division One or wherever, uh, if you could give one piece of advice to them, uh, what would it be? A kid reaches, a girl reaches out to you, a kid reaches out to you and says, "Hey, Alexis, I'm going to college at XXX. I'm playing college golf. I'm a freshman, but I'm really nervous. I'm really trying to figure out how to handle it all. What what piece of advice would you would you give them?" I think I would say to really get to know the people in the athletics department, like the staff, um, like your academic uh, advisors, services, all those things, um, tutoring, like the career opportunities that they provide, um, join clubs. Like I was the president of our student athlete advisory committee and that's how you meet other athlete friends. Um, Cause it's so easy to just stay in your bubble of the golf team or just think, oh, I'm so busy with golf. I don't have time to do other things. but honestly, the people that you're going to meet within your athletics community are going to help you get through your college experience. Um, and you don't have to do it alone. Like I remember my, my coach at Columbia saying like, you're not on an Island by yourself and it can feel like that initially. So really just putting yourself out there to meet all the people that are, that are in your new built-in athletics network, um, will help you get through it. And, I have some of my best friends now because of um, like those first couple months at Columbia. So that's what I would say. Awesome. Listen, thank you so much for taking some time to come on the uh, podcast. Obviously we'll be following you throughout the rest of your collegiate career and who knows what else after that, but uh, thanks so much. Alexis Florio star at Indiana and uh, one of the greatest Columbia players ever. So uh, thanks so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. I uh, hope you have a great uh, Christmas with your family and everybody. And uh, we'll definitely follow you uh, starting in the spring. Thank you, Joe. And thank you for supporting women's college golf. It means a lot. I appreciate the kind words. We're doing our best to cover as much golf as I possibly can with women, men, and every, everybody else. So hopefully we can continue to do that. And this has been, uh, this podcast series has been really fun for me just to talk to all you guys uh, about golf and, and college golf and everything else. And hopefully we're sh sh shedding some light if I could talk uh on on college golf and women's college golf as well so alexis thanks so much and i hope you all have a great rest of your day